Hey guys, this is Issues with Toddy One Skip. I am Toddy One Skip. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your day. Guys, there's so many of you now. I am so grateful. There must be something that happens when you reach a thousand subscribers because while I was sleeping today, I think I gained 400 more. So they must push out my videos. I haven't done anything that has changed anything. I haven't joined any programs to earn any money or anything. I haven't done anything. I said that I was going to try to make that decision if I was going to stick with anything in April. Um, so I don't know what's going on, but I'm enjoying being out to more of you, and, and you guys have been great. And so I thank you. I thank you so much. Um, let's get on to the first thing that I want to talk about. So Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt. Eight Passengers it was a huge YouTube channel. It was a family YouTube channel about six kids and their two parents, I think, and a dog um, raising. And it was it was a, it was a family channel about these two parents raising these six kids, and they're in Utah, and they're Mormons. And I I, I say that because there's something so wrong with the Mormon church when you hear the story of, of what's going on here. Um, so for those of you that don't know, real quick recap, um, August 30th of uh, 2023, a little boy ran to a neighbor's house and he appeared to have been, um, have bindings on his hand, on his wrists and bindings on his ankles. He was malnourished, he was hungry, he wanted food, he needed water, he, it was horrible. He escaped from a neighbor's house and ended up in another neighbor's house. Um, his little sister, who was younger than him, so he was 12, I believe, and his little sister was 10. And I, I uh, anyway, where they were found was in a woman's home. The woman's name is Jody Hildebrandt. Jody Hildebrandt has already had problems with, you know, being a licensed ther therapist. She had lost her license before because she had this nefarious way of trying to treat people, and that was by divide and conquer. When I say that, she was on more than, on every occasion, when it came to married couples, this woman made the couple separate, made the men leave, and, and made the women really fearful of the men and made every little incident or every little flaw in a person seem like it was the end of the world. And in order to protect yourself, you had to get away from your spouse to protect your family and such. She was so demented. And there were claims about this. She had already given up um, uh, people's information in, in sessions, their private information of, about things that were said in confidence, breaking every HIPAA law. And she gets her license taken away. And still the Mormon church, as soon as she gets her license back, starts again promoting this woman. 90% of her... Um, of her clients, she was referred from the Mormon church. They have to be held accountable for some of this because in the meantime, this woman with the mother of these children are up to 30 years in jail. They're going to spend, they can spend up to 30 years. That's the cap off time. Very interesting in this state of uh, Utah. <laughs> I've never heard anything like it. I'm not a lawyer. But apparently, so Jody Hildebrandt is the licensed therapist. Not anymore. <laughs> Ruby Frankie is the parents of the two children that were held captive inside of a safe room underneath a basement, tied to the floor and bounded. Health are two children, ages 9 and 11, turning 12 in a concentration camp-like setting. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. They were isolated from others and were hidden when people came to visit the house where the children and the defendants were staying. 
The children were forced to do physical tasks, like carrying loaded boxes up and down stairs, and wall sits or sitting against a wall without a chair or a stool for hours at a time. They were also forced to do manual labor outdoors in the extreme summer heat, at times without shoes or socks. They were forced to stand outside on a cement patio in the summer heat for hours and even days at a time. They were beaten, and the 12-year-old was regularly bound hand and foot after he attempted to run away in mid-July. Heaven only knows how much longer he could have survived in that situation. Very vivid description right there. Bounding children to the floor. Making them them stand in the heat, in the, in the desert heat, without any kind of um, protection from the sun, including any kind of sun cream, without giving them water when they needed water, making them run barefoot on rocks, making them carry heavy books upstairs back and forth and back and forth. Who the hell was this woman and why did the mother allow it to happen and participate in it happening? They did a plea deal. The mother has basically thrown her business partner and therapist, who's Jody Hildebrandt, under the bus. Ruby Frankie is the mother of the kids, part of the eight passengers channel that I've spoken about earlier. It's already defunct. It had 2.2 million people. 2.2 million people. What's wrong with us? Taking advice family advice, motherly advice from a woman who is behind our backs abusing her children. And we put people on a pedestal and people get upset with me with, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Because don't even put me up on a pedestal. You don't know who I am. Guys, you can't just take people that are sitting in front of cameras or in front of iPhones and put us anywhere. You have to do a little bit of research on people. And so what ended up happening here was, while she was out making claims of bringing families together and the greatness of families and love and and bringing up great children that listen and obey and only do the right things, she's abusing people, abusing children behind their back. And actually still, yes, abusing people because there's so much collateral damage here. Well, today was the sentencing of these women, and what I don't understand was, I I don't really understand, the sentencing is 1 to 15 years, and the judge, the judge does not define the years. It is up to, um, in the prison system, the parole board and a bunch of factors that take place and they decide over the course of time how much time you'll do, and it tops off at 30 years. So it's not 60 years. They have only, as a top off, the capability of only doing 30 years. But they could do as little as four years. They each have four specific charges that they're guilty of. So now it was time for their sentencing. And each charge, each aggravated child abuse charge, carries 1 to 15 years in prison. And in their plea agreements, both women agreed to serve prison time. They agreed that their sentences for each charge would run consecutively, meaning one charge after the other, one sentence after the other. Now, it is our understanding that the judge could possibly say, no, I think probation is more appropriate than prison time. The judge could maybe deviate from the plea agreements and say that the sentences should run concurrently, meaning together, not one after the other, maybe something like that. But we also have to be clear about Utah law, because under Utah law, the judge can only set a range for the sentences and whether the counts should run consecutively or concurrently. The judge can't determine the exact amount of time that each woman should serve in prison. In Utah, that is up to the Board of Pardons and Parole to determine. They determine later down the road when each woman gets released from prison. The charges are aggravated child abuse, second degree aggravated child abuse. So each each of those is one to 15 years. So that's what the judge said. You'll get one to 15 years. But again, the judge is not allowed to say how many years 
they get. That's really weird. And one to 15 years, I mean, if they top off at 30, it's all a fucking joke. This is the problem that I have with the judicial system. You see what I'm saying? Like, should, should, should either of them get four years for what they did to those children? You think in four years that those children are going to forget what happened to them? Unbelievable. I just don't understand that. And for a judge not to be able to impose it, it's only the only um, state in the country, apparently, that does that. I, I had not a clue that they did that. So I just want to read you what, um, <laughs> what Ruby Frankie has said. Somebody that wants to, what, take responsibility for what she did? Here's what she said to the judge in her statement. For the past four years, I've chosen to follow counsel and guidance that has led me into a dark delusion. My distorted version of reality went largely unchecked as I would isolate from anyone who challenged me. I was led to believe this world was an evil place filled with cops who control, hospitals that injure, government agencies that brainwash, church leaders who lie and lust, husbands who refuse to protect, children need abuse. She's blaming it all on um, me and on uh, Jody because that's what Jody said. And this is what Ruby says to her husband after she was having this great time with Jody Hildebrandt. I mean, there's pictures of them walking through canyons and everything. And she totally ignored her husband, Kevin, for, you know, over a year. He wasn't living in the home. But this is what she says in court to Kevin. Well, in part of her statement that she was reading. Kevin, my husband for more than 23 years, you are the love of my life. I'm so sorry to leave to you what we both started together. The ending of our marriage is a tragedy, and you are wrapped around my heart in a knot I'll never be able to undo. To my babies, she's talking to the six kids. She abused all of them in some way, shape, or form. You could see that on old videos online that she did. My six little chicks, you were part of me. I was the mama duck who was consistently waddling you to safety. In the past four years, I was consistently leading you to danger. I was so disoriented that I believed dark was light and right was wrong. When do we believe, when does somebody get a pass on abusing their kids? You know, they know it's wrong. That's why the kids weren't hiding. There's actual videos of these two women talking and doing videos online for to make money, talking about how to raise children and all of this when those two kids were underneath them, bound to the floor. So when... When do we say, wait a minute, I call bullshit here. Four years? Eight years? She's sorry, we should forgive her. The judge went harder on uh, Jody. Once again from Eric Clark, the prosecutor. And while his statement regarding Jody was very similar to Ruby recounting the same kind of abuse that these children suffered, it felt extra pointed against Jody Hildebrand. You see, he said that while Frankie, after being caught, showed remorse, he says Hildebrand was the complete opposite. After being caught, Ms. Hildebrand has shown little to no remorse for her actions. In telephone conversations that will be provided in full to the Board of Pardons and Parole, and which she knew to be recorded, she's repeatedly claimed that she is the victim and the children are the perpetrators. She has gone so far as to say that the things said in this proceeding and covered by the media today will be full of lies. The combination of three factors make Ms. Hildebrand a significant threat to the community. First, the severity of the abuse she caused to be inflicted on young children. Second, her attitude that everything she did was justified and that she is being wrongfully imprisoned. <clears throat> And third, her training as a therapist and aptitude for using online resources to convince others to follow her guidance. 
We didn't know about those phone calls. That's very interesting. We don't know the substance of those, but that is very interesting to hear. You know, by saying that Jody was the mastermind and the manipulator, and, and I do believe that, but that doesn't give any kind of clearance to uh, Ruby, who was the parent. <laughs> so who in their right mind would think that it's okay to bound a child where does, where does that come from? Where can you convince somebody that you can bound a kid and not give them food and water? And, and then smile about it. And when Jody, when Jody read her statement, she said that she loved those children. I wonder how many people felt their breakfast come back up in their throat when she said that. How, how is that even possible? And how do you even have that in your mind to say that out loud for people to pass judgment on it? Because that's what that statement, your statement is about that. Unbelievable. Guys, I'm asking you, when do you think, when do you think Somebody gets reformed from that. Somebody, I mean, like, if you're getting pleasure off of that, how do you unteach somebody that? Is that teachable? Or is it innate? Especially when you're a parent. And what do you think of the way that people are sentenced in Utah? Like, the judge doesn't get a say. One to 15 years, it's up to them. That, that's so strange to me. Guys, I really wasn't going to do a video on uh, Jody Hildebrandt, but I forgot that today was her sentencing, and um, I did find some of this stuff very fascinating. I do have a couple more videos that I need to get out. One of them is about Gypsy. One of them is about Scientology, and I hope to get those out to you today. I did just want to get this out here because, again, it was just very strange. And... Um, very weird. Hey guys, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Don't forget this is Issues with Toddy You Want Skip. Please like, subscribe, and share. And um, if you don't like me at the end, you can unsubscribe. All right, guys. Don't forget, be better today than you were yesterday, but not half as good as you'll be tomorrow. Thanks.